morning and come to the Stony Run PFWB Church in Dunn, North Carolina. We're glad you're here. Welcome. We pray that God will bless you. We got a few announcements we want to go ahead and cover so uh, we can all be on the same page, so to speak, starting a new year. All right. Now we got praise and worship practice tomorrow night at 6.30 and intercessory prayer at 7.30. So please make plans if you're involved with praise and worship to come out. And uh, if you're not coming for intercessory prayer, you're missing out. God shows up when people devote themselves and we're praying. And we'd love for you to come and be a part of the blessings that God is pouring out. Uh, Wednesday night, Bible study at 7. If you weren't here this past Wednesday, you missed out. God's spirit was poured out. God keeps pouring his spirit out upon us when we gather together. Any opportunity you get to be here, you need to be here so God can bless you and, and uh, use you in a mighty way. Uh, choir practice this Wednesday at 8 o'clock. Now, January the 24th, we got a slide for it. It's the Friday fun night. The theme is New Year, same old people. And I'm going to explain. Um, but anyways... Brenna, uh, you need to get with Brenna, all the, the youth that are going to be involved with that and parents because uh, they want you to want to let you know about food and that kind of thing. Come dress as a senior saint. Senior saints, if you're involved in it, come dressed as you are. But do what now? There you go. Miss Dolly's got plenty of clothes if you need to borrow some to be dressed as a senior saint. So please... Uh, if you're involved with that, uh, come on out. We, we want you to be there be there for our youth. It's very important to support the youth ministry of the Stony Run Church because they will be, they are the church of today, and they're going to be the church of tomorrow. So we need to support them in every opportunity. Now, we've got our Healthy Church Conference coming up on the 25th, and that's from uh, 9 to 3 o'clock. You can go on the uh, organization website and register. They've got a lot of different classes and things that they're offering it's, uh, I think it's $20 for uh, non-licensed ministers and $10 for licensed ministers. So please register there. It'll be a blessing to you. And we've got our choir fundraiser that's coming up um, February the 14th. Now, how many here have never seen, well, let's, how many of you here have seen or participated in the, the fundraiser that we do at Valentine's Day? Raise your hand. Okay, Wow. Well, y'all are all in for a treat, because uh, that was about 18 of us. So uh, I didn't even count the, the folks behind me. Those eyes aren't working this morning. So, uh, But come on out, and uh, we need your help. If you want to sing, if you want to do a performance, you need to let Carrington know by Wednesday night. Wednesday night is the cutoff, and uh, if you're going to be singing, you know, like I said last week, the lyrics will be approved because there is some songs from the 80s and 90s that we don't need to hear sung and performed up here at the church. Amen. So uh, so we want you to make sure you get involved there. It is a choir fundraiser, so we're raising money for the different activities of the church. So we want everybody, uh, the choir, we want y'all to help. If you don't sing, if you don't dance, uh, whatever, we want you to help because there's other things that need to be done. There's going to be people needing to set up. There's going to be people needing to tear stuff down. There's going to be food preparation. There's going to be ticket sales, all that kind of thing. So please, we need everybody's participation to make this a big success. Now, um, also, ladies, the secret sister forms are at the back at the table. And Miss Kim, if you want to participate with the secret sister um event and I don't know all the details because obviously I'm not a secret sister but those that participated I'm sure it was a blessing to them yeah because so, you get presents hey well, if you get presents no nah, I'm still going to pass on the secret sister <laughs> but um, we want you to get the form back there Miss Kim needs that turned in by next Sunday by the 19th so please if you are a sister a woman a lady and you would like to participate and be a blessing to somebody else, please take part in that. We want you to do that. So if there is no other announcements, we're going to stand and we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Now, I'm glad y'all woke up this morning. I'm glad God woke me up this morning. I was listening to Psalms 20 this morning. It said, some may trust in horses and some may trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. And if you're here, you're in the right place. 
And I pray that God's blessings will be upon you. We pray our blessings upon the choir and the praise and worship. And our pastor told us Wednesday night he's got a word from the Lord, and I believe him. And he's got a fresh word today, so I'm glad you're here because you are in the right place. Father God, Lord, we thank you for your blessings, God. We thank you for waking us up this morning, oh God. Father God, if you had not willed that our hearts would be this morning, we would be dead, oh God. We would be in our eternal resting place, whether it be with you or in hell separated. But thank you, God, that we have one more opportunity to be here in your place, in your house, oh God, gathered together with your people so that we can hear the fresh word of the Lord today that's going to change our lives forever. Father, we pray for every song that's sung, God, that it will be sung to bring praise and honor unto you. We pray for every hand that's raised, oh God, that it will be raised to you and not for eyes to be seen, but for you to see it, oh God. And we pray for our pastor as he brings the word of God. We pray your blessings upon everything that's done, and we're going to give you the praise for it all. For us in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. I believe. 
stay there sometimes um, when I behave. But this morning coming in, I was like, these songs, why do you have these songs? Why do you have these songs? And it was just the enemy. So I turned on this song in the car and I started listening to it. And in the middle of this song, the, the, the performer stops and he says, do y'all believe? Do you believe? Most of us in this room have been reading the word for our whole lives. Do we believe what the word says? We have a lot of people in this church who are experiencing some negative circumstances, some illness, some situations that you and I can't understand. We're not there. We're not going through it. They need us to believe for them. They need us to stand in place for them. And then all the stuff that's going on. There. I see people in this room today who need a touch from Jesus. Yes, they need healing. Hallelujah. Do we believe? Yes. Do we believe? Yes. I believe. We're going to do that bridge one more time. I believe, I believe. Let's go. I believe, I believe. Do you? I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, what
I just want to take this time. If anyone needs prayer this morning, please come forward. We'll go ahead and uh, anoint you and pray over you this morning. If you have a stand in with somebody this morning, um, please come forward and allow God.
aren't different you have to stand on the word that things are different they have changed in the spirit world and we're just waiting for it to happen in the physical world don't give up God is true to his word his will is for you to be healed his will is for you to be whole it's the way he created you to be and the enemy doesn't like what's happening at Stony Run and he's trying to take us out, and he's not going to do it. Hold on to what you have and what you receive today. It is going to be amazing to watch God finish the work. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's an honor and a pleasure again to come before you this morning, looking at your beautiful faces, even though the hurt and the pain, but we still pressed here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't know what that does to God for us to press in the middle of all our mess. Hallelujah. It really, really, really touches God. We have loved ones that are sick in the hospital. Our bodies racking with pain. Thank God mine's is not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we That's got to miracle. keep on. We got to keep on pressing. I pressed. I pressed and I pressed and I pressed. No matter how bad my back hurt me. I'm going to tell you something. These past four months have been something else. I didn't think I was going to make it. I hurt so bad. But I'm, hallelujah. I'm standing on God's promise. Hallelujah. He said, keep pressing. That's right. It might not look like it's going to come, but it's going to come, right. y'all. God is not slack on his promises. And he said his word won't return to him void. We got to stand on the word of God. We got to stand, trust and believe that there's healing. There's healing in the place. God said the things he did, we can do also. Hallelujah. He said his word is the same today, yesterday, forevermore. So it don't come back to him void. And we will be healed. We will be here. We just got to stand, right. have faith, hold on. Hold on when you can't do nothing else. Just hold on. And God will step in on time. Hallelujah. And I just thank him for it because I know he's been showing me faces and he's been showing me things and he's been telling me, hold on, Wendy. Hold on. I'm not finished with you yet. You got to hold Amen. on. And he's not finished with none of us That's yet. Right. We all have a God to a charge to keep and a God to glorify. And we got to stand on the word of God. We got to stand and we got to believe and we got to trust that God's going to do just what he said. He don't have no perspective. Don't you think he healed me and he won't heal y'all? Because he will. He That's can. Right. He will. God is a God that don't lie. Hallelujah. And I just thank him for it. Hallelujah. I just love y'all. I love you. And, and, and the pain, I feel it. I feel the hurt and the pain in my spirit. Hallelujah. And I pray for each and every one of you that God would just move in and touch and heal. Hallelujah. Do what he said he's going to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you, God. I, I know he will. I already see things that God is doing. Hallelujah. But I believe, I have enough faith for all of y'all. Hallelujah. Because I know what God is going to do for you. And at this time, we're going to take up our tithes and our offering. And I'm going to read a scripture, a couple of verses coming from Malachi, the third chapter. And I'll be coming from the 
the 10th verse, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that you won't have room to receive. So see, that's the kind of God we're dealing with. We're dealing with a God that will bless you above all blessings. And I mean, it might not be right now, but it will be. It will be. Hallelujah. Let us bow our heads. Oh, Heavenly Father, I come before you this morning as humble as I know how, Lord. Thanking you for this day. Thanking you for my brothers and my sisters. Thank you for the prayer that went forth, Father God. Thank you for the healing that went forth, Father God. Because I know you're not slack on your promises, Father. Thank you for touching the souls and the spirits, Father God. Those that are not here, those that stood in gaps for their brothers and sisters, Father God. Thank you. Thank you for what you're going to do. Father God, thank you for the monies that we're giving, our tithes and our offering, storing up money and food for in our storehouse for the people, Father God, that is going lacking. Father, I just thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Your goodness is running after, 
it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful, so, so faithful. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I want to talk about a measure of faith today. I gotta get ready here. The anointing in the house is powerful this morning. I do want to talk about a measure of faith. I'm going to bring you through the scripture. I want to give you the revelation, um, which is God's revelation. It's not my revelation. It's not anything new. Um, there's nothing new under the sun. Everything's contained in the 66 books of the Bible. Everything that you need is right here. And anybody bring you something outside of this? Why? I don't know if they're right or wrong, but I do know what's in here is right. And so you've got to make sure that you stick, stick with what God tells you. There's no new revelation. This is the revelation. This is it. But I do, I do want to read just one verse um, from Romans chapter 12 to kind of set us up. Put your mind in a measure of faith. God's put this in my spirit about a measure of faith. Faith. It's all, it's all about faith, y'all. Everything's always been about faith. It's about faith in Jesus Christ. It's about faith in the Word of God. It's about faith in what God can do. It's about the faithfulness of Christ, that He will finish what He says, that He started in you. He will finish. It'll bring it to completion. A measure of faith. So Romans chapter 12, I, I, I want to read, read um, verse 3 um, just, just to kind of set us up here a little bit. It says, For I say, through the grace given uh, to me, to everyone who's among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to each think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Now, I want you to understand that this, this verse here is talking about don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to, that you're not bigger than what you think you are and all that stuff. It's all about God. So don't think more highly than, than what you ought to, but think as God has dealt to each one of you a measure of faith. Work with the faith that God has given you in your life. We have each been given a measure of faith. Everybody's been given a measure of faith. Believer or not believer or unbeliever, you've been given a measure of faith. You've been given what you need to be able to get saved. Because you see, our hearts can be desperately wicked. And, and, and we don't understand that. But God has given us something called provenient grace. He's given us enough grace that we can get by the wickedness of our heart to be able to choose our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's a, that's a measure of grace. That's a measure of faith. We've each been given a measure of faith. 
Well, you got to ask yourself, what am I going to do with this? Um, and, and this is going to, I'm going I'm to take you through the scripture here a little bit. This is, God has, has led me down this winding road downtown to this because I, I want you to understand. Everybody, if you will, turn to Matthew chapter 25, starting in verse 14. I, I want, because I want to talk about the measure of faith that each one of us has been given. Everybody's been given something by God. Do you hear me today? Everybody's been given something. You've all, we've all received something from God. We may not not we may not say or uh, profess that God gave it to us but God gave you everything you got amen and then everything comes from God so we're gonna we're gonna start there Matthew chapter 25 starting in verse uh, 14 I want to I want to read through this um, this talent or the parable of the talents I want to I want to just go through this now I'm not preaching here this is just this is part of it you got to put stuff in context you got to get it in there where it needs to go so you can go ahead and receive what God has for you sometimes sometimes it's one verse sometimes Sometimes it's one word, but but today it's going to be a a, 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 a road I'm going to take you down today. We're going to just keep thinking about a measure of faith. Keep thinking about what has God given you? What's God given you today? So in the parable of the talents in Matthew chapter 25, starting in verse 14, it says, The kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. Okay, And as to one he gave five talents, and a, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on a journey. So the man left. He left them with what he had given them. He's given them all something. Everybody receives something. Everybody's got something. And, he, and he's left. And it says, then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. So he used what God had given them. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. So he didn't do anything with it. He dug a hole and he, he buried it. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled the accounts with them. And so he said to he who had received five talents, came and brought the other five talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents, and look, I've gained five more talents beside them. And his Lord said to him, well, well done, good and faithful servant. You're faithful over a few things, and I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. So he gave him five. He gave him five more back. He gave him back. It says, he also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. And look, I've gained two more talents beside them. And his Lord said to him, well, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things, and I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Okay, so, so they took and they used what they were given. I want you to think about this in, in, in the measure of faith. What, what God has given you, he's given every one of us a measure of faith. A measure of faith. You have the ability to have faith. You have the ability to believe God for something, for whatever it might be. I want you, I want you to see what happens. But, but then it says, then he who received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you'd be a hard man, reaping where you've not sown and gathering where you've not scattered seed. And I was afraid, and I went and I hid your talent in the ground. And look, there you have what's yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. It says this, for everyone who has, more will be given. And he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And it says, and cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh, you, you know, you, you look at this, and you, and you see this, that, that everybody's been given a measure. You've all been given a measure. I've been given a measure. You've been given a measure. Everybody's been given a measure. We've all been given something. You know, you may say, well, I got five talents, or I got two talents, or I got one talent, or I got half a talent, or whatever it might be. But what have you done with what God gave you? Understand what happens for to everyone who has, more will be given, and he'll have an abundance. But for him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. If you, if you, if you don't use that measure of faith, what, what, what's going to happen? I mean, what's going to happen if, if what God's given you if, you, if you don't use it, I'm afraid that, that God's going to pull it back, okay? He said, and I want you to think about this. We've each been given a measure of faith, a measure. Well, how much do we need? How much do you need? How much do you need? Do you need five? Do you need two? Do you need three? Do you need what? What do you need? How much? I've always been told, you know, God deals with our needs and not our wants. So he's going to give you what you need. Amen. God always gives you what you need. 
Not what you want, but what you need. And see, sometimes we've got to, we've got to get that in our mind. Okay? Well, let's go to Matthew chapter 17, verses 14 through 21. I told you I'm going to drag you through the New Testament a little bit here this morning, but it's okay. It's all the Word of God. I feel like it's profitable, and I feel like that I've got a place that I'm going. The Lord has just put this in my spirit. I'm really excited about what God's going to do this morning. I mean, it, we're, just, we're just getting started, y'all. Just getting started. Hang with me. Hang with me. Sometimes the, the road is narrow. The way is hard. You've got you to go with me. Broad's the path that leads to destruction. We're going to go on a narrow path this morning that leads to life. It tells us this. It says in, in Matthew chapter 17, Starting in verse 14, it says, And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he's an epileptic, and he suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't cure him. I mean, this is, you know, these are disciples of Christ. He says, I brought them to your disciples. They couldn't cure them. Jesus answered and says, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring them here to me. So Jesus says, hey, just bring them over here. And Jesus rebukes the demon. It came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. And then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. For surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you'll say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. All right, so how much faith do you need this morning? How much faith do you need? Well, I decided I was going to show you how much faith that you need this morning. Brother Albert, if you could come up, I, I, got, a little bit, I got a little bit of something for you all this morning. Don't say I ain't never give you nothing. So I decided I'd get a little bit of mustard seed this morning. Y'all ever seen any mustard seed? This little tiny pack right here. You know how many seeds are in this little tiny pack? You got a guess? Anybody got a guess how many seeds comes in a little pack? No, not a million, praise God. <laughs> 150 seeds in one of these little packs. Now, if I poured out this little pack... And I could, I, it wouldn't even fill a thimble. Y'all, does anybody know what a, th uh, nobody probably sews, they probably don't know what a thimble is anymore. But, but, uh, but a thimble is a little thing you put on, your, put on your end of your finger or whatever when you're sewing so you don't poke yourself with a knee. There, there, there's enough seed in, in one of these little packs for 150 to each get one little seed and, and it wouldn't even fill up a thimble. They're teeny tiny. I want to make sure everybody gets, gets, the, gets their, their measure this morning. I, I wanted to have something, I wanted to have something that, that you could understand what a mustard seed. And we talk about this stuff in sermons all the time. We talk about different things. I want you to see what a mustard seed is. Put it between your fingers when you get it. Feel that little teeny tiny seed right there. That is a mustard seed. Okay? That's a mustard seed. You know how much faith God said to Jesus? Well, God, Jesus, either one, Jesus, God. God's the Word. The Word is God. The Word was with God. The Word is God. All that stuff. Jesus said, or God said, all you need is the faith of how much? A mustard seed. It doesn't say you got to have this humongous faith. It doesn't say you got to have a boatload of faith, a truckload of faith, or anything else. All it says you got to have the faith of a grain of a mustard seed. I mean, I, I want you to think about that. And, and I want to go one step further, and I want, I want to put something before you this morning. I, I, would, I would say this. Did everybody get a seed this morning? I want to make sure everybody, did everybody get a measure of faith? Because that's, that's basically what this represents to you today is a measure of faith. Everybody in a place, you've all been given a measure of faith today. Now, now whether you're operating in faith, whether you believe in faith, whether you believe in God, whether you have, have Jesus as your Savior, whether you have anything, I'm here to tell you today that you have been given a measure of of faith. When you took a breath and you come out your mother's womb and you squalled, you were given a measure of faith. When you came into the world, you were given a measure of faith. So, so I want you, to, want you to understand this. Now, now one thing I would say about faith is this. I believe faith is like a light switch. 
Okay? Generally, there's only two positions. Either the light is on or the light is off. That's it. That's faith. Either your faith is on or your faith is off. If you have a little faith, guess what you have? Faith. Okay? Look, sometimes you say, I ain't got enough faith. Have you got faith? If you got faith, then you got enough. All you need is a little bit of faith. You don't have to have a lot of faith. Look, look, feel that. Feel that between your fingers. Feel that. Feel that little bit right there. A mustard seed. This is all you need. This is all you need. This is all you need. Right here. This is, this is all you need. You don't need. You don't need a boat load. You don't need a truck load. You don't need any of that. You just need, you just need some. Okay, well, well let, me, let me go a little bit further about this. Well, what does the Bible say about faith? Because we need, we need to understand what, what the Word of God says about faith, not just what Rick says, because that doesn't really matter what I say in the end. It matters about what the Bible says about faith. So I'm going to go to Hebrews chapter 11 and just go to, uh, to verse 1 and see what, see what the Bible says about faith. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So this little grain here that you got in this little packet right here, It represents things that have not yet been seen. Okay? See, we, we pray for a lot of things, and a lot of the stuff that we pray for, we believe it's possible by human means. But I'm here to tell you that we have got to get into the, the mind of God. We've got to get into the mind of Christ. We've got to get into, into that to where we understand that faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, that there's times when you're going to walk by faith, you're going to have to exercise faith, okay? You're going to have to walk in faith. You're going to have to believe God for the faith. You're going to have to believe Him even though everything around you may tell you different. People may tell you that you'll never get better. People may tell you that your family will never, never come back together. People may tell you that your marriage will never be, never be fixed, that it'll always be a mess. People may tell you that your children will always be a mess. People may tell you that your finances are always going to be a wreck. People may tell you that you are stuck the way you are. I'm here to tell you today that faith is the evidence of things unseen. Unseen, not things you saw. Praise God, the things you've not yet seen, that's faith. That's faith. We've each been given a measure of faith. A measure of faith. A measure of faith. A measure. It also goes on in there to say in verse 2 of chapter 11, For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. Our testimony is based upon what we do with the measure of faith that God has given us. Your testimony is based on what you've done with it, not because you said you had faith, but what did you actually do with the faith, with the measure of faith that God gave you. Everyone's been given a measure of faith. Oh, we need some. Some of you came in here this morning and said, my faith is weak. My faith is, is, is falling down. I don't have hardly any faith. But if you got some faith, guess what you got? I got faith. Either the light's on or the light's off. Do you have faith this morning? Because I'm here to tell you that God says we just need faith the size of the grain of a must. That is so inconsequential. I mean, if you took that seed out and you put it in your hand and you squeezed it, you might not even be able to tell that it was there. I mean, I want you to think about that because there's times in your life when you're going to be walking and you're going to be saying, Lord, I don't even feel faith anymore. I don't feel anything. But you better look because it's right there. Put it in between your fingers and understand that all you need today is faith, the grain of a mustard seed. That's all you need. It's all you need. Remember, I said faith is similar to a light switch. It's on, it's off, it's present, it's absent. Now, now let's go a step further. Let's go a little bit further in this because because I want you to understand something. It, it says in James chapter two verse seventeen, it says, "Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead." You take this and you put it in your pocket, and you don't. 
walk in faith. And you don't believe God for things. Amen. If you're not believing God for something today, I'm here to tell you right now that your faith without works is dead. It's dead as a doornail. Look, you've got to believe in God for something this morning. What do you believe in God for today? I'm talking about miraculous stuff. I had someone come up here this morning. Sister, what did you tell me you need today? Said, yes. A miracle. A miracle from a miracle. Miss, praise God, sister. This right here, this represents the miracle. This represents the miracle. This represents the miracle, y'all. This represents, it's not a miracle in a bag. Look, there's nothing magical about a, a mustard seed. I'm not talking about magic. I'm talking about faith. This represents your miracle. This represents what you need to happen in your life. This represents you walking in that doctor and they saying, there ain't no more cancer. We don't know what happened. Praise God. This is what's going to fix your marriage. This is what's going to fix your family. This is what's going to fix your finances. This is it right here. This little bit of nothing that God has given us called faith. Faith. But faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. If you're not walking in faith, then your faith is dead. See, we got to understand that. When you, when you ask God for things, you got to believe. You got to ask and you got to believe. You got to ask and you got to believe. Now, does that mean it's happening right then? No, it doesn't mean it's happening right then. It may be getting worked out in the heavenly. It may take three weeks of spiritual battle before you ever see what's happened. We don't know that. We don't know what's going on. It might take six months. It might take six years. It might take 60 years. But God's working it out in his own time. But this is faith. Faith by itself that does not have works is dead. Okay, well, let's look at something else. If this mustard seed represents faith, what will come of it if we don't plant it? I mean, you can have a whole, whole thing of seeds. And I can tell you all, look, I'm going to invite you all over, man. I'm going to have some really good mustard greens. <laughs> this reminds me a lot of like the dinner me and Gina had last night. <laughs> we went to this really fancy place. And I'm not going to name it off or anything because that's the here nor there. But I don't know. I think all rich people should be skinny. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, they ain't never heard of a pig picking or, or, a, or a buffet or anything like that. They roll out food, and they roll out a whole course. And, and, and when I looked at the menu, I looked, and, and, and I ordered chicken, roasted chicken, on, on, a, on a bed of, of mashed potatoes with glazed uh, uh, carrots. And, and I was all excited, man. I was with a little bit of... Little bit of, uh, of um, uh, I was gravy on it and everything. I mean, I was like, oh, I can't wait for this to come. Oh, it's going to be so good, man. I'll come up. Man, they pull out this big old plate. And there was a little teeny tiny chicken on there. He was a small chicken, but he was a chicken. I could tell it was chicken. And then they had a little bit of white stuff down there that was potatoes. And then slivers in that. I think they took one carrot and they divided it between 100 people. And they slivered it in there. And I was like, I told Gina, I said, when we get done, man, we're going to McDonald's. <laughs> I said, this meal probably costs 100 bucks a head. I'm going to McDonald's. I'm going to eat off the Happy Meal next because this ain't getting it all. Y'all, if, if I invite you to the house and I tell you we're going to have mustard greens and I throw this seed out on the table, y'all be like, huh, unless this is the Jetsons, why we ain't going to do so good here. This ain't working, okay? We just, we can't go there. I, I mean, I want you to understand that, that, that we, we've got to understand that nothing's going to come from this seed. We're not going to eat mustard green. We're not going to be able to get out the, the, the hot, hot vinegar and the, and the peppers and have us a good old time and some neck bone and everything. We ain't going to be able to do that if we don't plant this seed, y'all. There is a harvest that's going to come someday, but you got to plant it. You got to plant it. Let's look at Matthew chapter 13. Let me see. I think I still got a Matthew in here. I about flipped all my faith off the pulpit here. We don't want to do that. Preacher loses faith. We in trouble. Amen. Matthew chapter 13. Verse 31 and 32. 
It says this is the parable of the mustard seed. See, I, I just I want you to and, and I want you to understand that, that God can use the smallest, most inconsequential thing that you've ever seen to, to tell you an incredible truth, to give you a truth that, that you'll never forget. You'll never forget the mustard seed. You'll never forget this. That, that you, you, will, you will realize and understand. And when you read this in the Bible now, you're going to remember. You're going to say, I remember that crazy preacher, Rick. He gave me a mustard seed up there. You know, I remember that. He told me to put it between my fingers. He told me to feel it. He told me to look at it. He told me to look at it. And I understand that ain't nothing going to happen to this until I plant it until I use it Matthew 13 31 32 I know it's in here someplace another parable he put forth to them and he said the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed like a mustard seed okay what do we got to do with this mustard seed it says which a man took and sowed in his field which indeed is the least of all seeds but when it's grown, it's greater than the herbs, becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. Y'all, you see this right here? You see this right here? Do you believe that the birds of the air could come and nest in its branches? Do you believe that, that look, because I'm looking, all I see is a little red seed. I'm just like, what? Man, what are you talking? This is God's promise to us. You got to understand if it's not planted, nothing is going to happen. If we don't plant this, then we'll never see it grow into the, the, the bush, the herb, the tree to where the birds can fly in. But see, your little bit of faith, your little bit of faith, you understand what God can do with a little bit of faith? You, man, I'm telling you, he says we can move mountains and we can command a mountain to move from here to there. We can do all those things. But notice what the man had to do with his faith, with his seed. He had to sow it in a field. You had to sow it somewhere. You got to take your faith and you got to sow it someplace. You got to sow it in a promise. You got to sow it somewhere. You got to plant it. And let me put a bow on all this. What's the Bible? Wendy, you can tell me the answer to this. What's the Bible say about sowing? You reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. Is anybody hearing me this morning? You reap what you sow. I'm here to tell you today that if you don't sow your faith into something, if you don't take that little bit of mustard seed, if you don't take that little bit that God gave you, that dream, that vision, that thing that God gave you and said, oh no, I'm not done yet. You take that little bit of mustard seed of faith and you believe me because I'm here to tell you it's going to get so big, so mighty, so awesome. It's going to blow your mind. There's going to be able to, birds are going to, are going to perch in this thing. It's going to be magnificent. It's going to be mighty. You will reap what you sow. But if you're not sowing faith, y'all, then your faith is dead. And if your faith is dead, then you will never reap. You'll never reap. You'll never reap in time. That's the time when we dance. Reap in time. That's the time when the harvest comes in. Reap in time. That's the time when we get excited. That's it. Faith is like this mustard seed. It's got to be sown in our lives in order to bring the increase. The harvest, the blessing, the healing. One thing I know, y'all can stand with me as we close this morning. One thing I know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, one thing I know. Is that God can do mighty and powerful things in our lives and in our church. There's times in my life where I feel like I have no faith. You ever been there? I'm going to tell you, there's times when I feel like I got no faith, y'all. I got no faith. I mean, I ain't got a mustard seed. I ain't got nothing. I got nothing. But you know what's really cool is that God knows that there's times where we need, we need symbolic things. We need symbols in our lives. We need something we can grab a hold of sometimes, right? Because people ask you, what's God look like? I don't know. So what do we do? We wear crosses that represent the sacrifice of Jesus. 
you know, we take communion. We drink, we drink the, the, the juice and, and we eat the bread and, and we, 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 in our mind's eye, we see the body and the blood of Christ for each one of us. And this morning, I, I wanted to give you something that represents faith. And I don't know where you're at on the, on the faith trail today, okay? You may be at the point where you're like, man, I ain't got nothing left. Everything I've got, I've got a bad report. Every which way I turn, I don't know. I have no faith left. I got nothing left. I got nothing to believe with. I got nothing. Why don't you take that little seed, put it between your fingers this morning. You feel that. As small as it is, you can't hardly see it. As small as it is. You know what? I can feel it. I can feel it. And as I feel that between my fingers, I feel my faith begin to be energized. I feel my faith beginning to come alive. I feel my faith to where, where I believe that, you know what? I can sow this. Hallelujah. I can sow this. And there's going to come a day, praise God, where the kingdom of God is going to come in to where the things in my life that, that I thought were not possible are coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all ever had a, had a family member that was lost? And you were like, there's no way they'll ever get saved. There's no way they'll ever, ever, ever. If you're that way today, I want you to take this seed and I want you to put it between your fingers. And I want you to believe for that loved one that you think that it's absolutely impossible that they will ever get saved. And I want you to have faith the size of the grain of a mustard seed. Amen. But I don't want you to just hang on to it, okay? What I want you to do this morning with your grain, and then not, just, not, just, not just for a family member, if you're sick this morning, if you know someone, and, and I'm going to go one step further. If you ain't got nothing wrong with you today, where well, you are absolutely 100% healthy as a horse, you got no problems, everybody's saved in your family, you got the perfect marriage, you got the perfect job, you got everything you could ever need, you are blessed exceedingly abundantly beyond anyone could ever ask or imagine, then I want you to do something for me this morning. Hallelujah. I want you to sow into someone else's life this morning. Praise God. I want you to take your seed this morning. Hallelujah. I want you to take your seed. Look, we're not gonna, I'm not going to make a big, big thing or anything, but I want you to take this seed and I want you to plant it this morning. Hallelujah. Because I don't want you to take the seed with you this morning. I want you to plant it because it, without works, faith is dead. Without works, faith is dead. Without works, this is your little work this morning. It's your little bit of believing God for something this morning. Hallelujah. If you believe God for something this morning, what I want you to do is I want you to take your seed, your little bit of faith, and I want you to put it up here at the altar. And I want you to, to pray a prayer as you, as you place it up here at this altar. I want you to pray over that little bit that you got this morning. Hallelujah. Look, ain't got to be nothing pretty. Ain't got to be nothing theological. Ain't got to be anything. But I want you to take your seed this morning, y'all. Come on up out of your seats. Take a step in faith, and I want you to put it up here at the altar, and we're going to have all our muscles.